Hello dear friends, a great welcome to this series on Abacus, myself Jairaj and P. This is the first tutorial and provides a very brief introduction to Abacus. Abacus is a suite of powerful engineering simulation programs and is based on the fine filament method FEM. It can perform different types of analysis covering linear, non-linear, Structural analysis including both statics and dynamics, coupled to thermal electrical analysis, caustics, and also the solid mechanics. Abacus has an exhaustive library of elements capable of modeling any geometry. It contains an extensive list of material models covering engineering materials such as metals, rubber, etc., and geotechnical materials as soils and rock. Abacus CAE, that is the complete Abacus environment, is an interactive graphical environment for Abacus for the model development, assignment of loads, boundary conditions, and for submission of models for analysis. Abacus CAE can import geometries from external sources and third party CAD systems such as Cashier, ANSYS, AutoCAD, Nastran, etc. So let me directly take you to the Abacus. So when we open the backers, the main window looks something like this. So I would like to give you a brief description regarding the various items in this main window. From the top, you will find the title bar. So this the title bar essentially shows the backers version, the work directory, as well as uh, the model name. For example, here you can say that is a backers uh, CAE 2017 version and uh, the model database, the work directory is mentioned here, and also the name of the model database with an extension of .ca is also shown here. Just below this little title bar, we have the menu bar, and this menu bar contains all the items required to complete the operation specific to a module. So this is our menu bar. So here you can see that the menu bar, it contains the various items like the file, model, viewport, view. For example, if you just click a file, it allows you to save the file, it allows you to open a new model, it allows you to import some specific parts or the assembly from some other databases. And it also allows you to run the Python script on which the backers is based. Okay, and it also allows you to set the work directory as well. Now regarding the work directory, it is, uh, <clears throat> shall be noted that uh, when we model and complete an analysis in a backers, a backers automatically creates a set of files. And these files shall be stored in a dedicated folder so that we'll be able to identify these files later for our uh, uh, review purpose. And uh, such a folder, normally we call it as the work directory. So the first step in generating any model is go to the file menu, then what we do is that you set the work directory. And normally the backers creates this 10 to 15 files. The most notable among these files is a, a file with an extension of a .cae. We call them, we call it as a model database file. And then we have got an output database file also that is a, with an extension of a .odb. Then there are many other files with an extension of uh, .imp, that's an input file. Then there's a journal file with an extension of .jnl. So then we also get uh, some kind of a message files during the execution of the backers files, etc. So setting the work directory is the first step in the development of any model. Now just below this uh, uh, menu bar, you will find the toolbars. So these toolbars are nothing but they provide a quick access to items that are already available in the menu bar. For example, if you see here, here you'll find in the toolbar, open file, then we have the save file, and also you will find the print. And you can see that the same is also available in the item file of the menu bar. You go to the file, again you'll find the same thing, save, okay, the print, all those things, open, etc. So the purpose of the toolbar is only to provide you a direct and a quick access to the items that is already available in the menu bar. And on the other hand, on this side, you'll find that these are what we call as the visualization control items. For example, here you can see the pan view, then we have got the rotate the view, 
and we have got the manage view and all these items are readily also available in a, the view menu item for example here you can see that pan rotate so these are some of the toolbars that are available to us uh, to directly access some of the items already available in the menu bar if for example here you will find that there is uh, a toolbar known as an auto fit view and here uh, we have that have turned the perspective on and off and uh, many other things which uh, we will come across in the future tutorials now just below this uh, uh, toolbar we have the context bar so this area is known as the context bar and here we have one very important item that is known as the module now first of all what is a module so actually in the context bar we have the uh, item module and the model name then we have got the part name okay so in fact a package is divided into a set of modules where each module allow us to work on one aspect of the module now look here now let us see what are the modules available to us so this particular uh, tool there is a module that provides you the list of the various uh, modules available in abacus so just press this so this uh, this provides you the module list starting from part property assembly step interaction load mesh optimization job visualization sketch so as you can see each module will allow us to perform only one particular operation only on one particular aspect for example if we go to the part it allows us only to create a part relevant to the model whereas if we go to the property it allows us to define the property of all the materials that are relevant to the model similarly for example if you go to the mesh it provides us all the parameters that are required to mesh the area so remember that each module is designed in order to cover one particular aspect of the model now it's also be noted that the appearance of the menu bar and the tool bar these are very specific to the module for example you can see that these are the menu bar and the tool bars specific to the module part now on the other hand if i directly go to the mesh you will find that all of these things suddenly changes right so means that when we select a particular module a backus automatically changes the menu bar as well as the tool bar just below it in order to allow us to quickly access all the operations that are relevant to this module now on this right on the right side you will find another uh, uh, item that's a model right he, this will display the model name and on the side for example if i select the part you will be able to select whichever part you have for example for the development of this model i have uh, created the various parts and i can just show you the so this is one bolt i created and then uh, i have got another column member column part i have created for this model and then there is a flange plate with the holes and then there's a web plate and all these parts will be assembled to the correct locations and the orientations in the module known as the assembly now if i press assembly you will find that all the menu as well as the, as well as the toolbar changes and you will find that the picture of the viewport represents the whole assembly wherein you will find that the various parts already mentioned above are assembled together right so now here on this side you will also for example suppose i go to the module part so on this side you will find the various what we call as the tool box so this is a tool box right and this tool box contains the various items relevant to this module for example this item allows us to create the part and on this side you have got a part manager and this item for example it is allows you to create a cut and extrude and then we have uh, many items such as for example creation of the data points etc which we will cover in detail later in our uh, uh, abacus tutorials so means that the 
once you select a particular module, example the property, you will find that automatically the toolbox changes. And this toolbox really allows us to assign the required property or to define the property in a very efficient and a fast way. Okay, so this is the toolbox we have, and this is the context bar. Okay, and on this left side is a very important item known as the model tree. So you'll find that it's a model tree. Okay, so on the top, you'll find that the name of the model is indicated, and all the objects relevant to this model are displayed here. Please remember that all these objects are being created through the various modules that is available in the module context bar. Okay, so now, so as you can see that this model, if I want to tell you what are the various objects available here, okay, for example, you will find that it contains an object known as a part. So in the bracket, you will find there's a four indicating that there are four parts. So if you just click this, you'll find that it has got the parts known as bolt, column, flange plate, web plate, and all the details pertaining to each part. If you want to see, you can just click it. For example, you can see that what are the various features available to this bolt. Okay, so if you click it, you'll find that yes, there are many partition cells. So it means that this model tree will let you know the various objects that we have created during the model development. And model tree also allows an opportunity to change any parameters associated. You can add, you can edit, you can modify any part that is generated or any item that is being generated during the model development operation. And many, some people will find it very easy to develop the model through the module available in the context bar. And some people will find it much more comfortable to navigate through the model tree and then uh, uh, progress through the model development. That again depends upon, and you can uh, combinedly use the module facility available here as well as the model tree also for the model development. So that's all regarding the model tree. So remember that the model tree is uh, essentially, it is a graphical overview of your model and the objects that it contains, such as the parts, materials, steps, loads, and output requests means whatever details are being generated through the modules, it will get automatically propagated in the model tree, right? Now here, coming to this side, this is your viewport. So obviously you know that a viewport is a display area. For example, if you go to the part, so you can select a particular part and directly obtain it in the viewport. Suppose you want to get a total picture of the assembly, you can directly go to the Shift to the assembly, you'll find that yes, this is your assembly area. So this viewport it provides you the directly, you know, the, uh, the display of the models, and also this viewport will present you all your analysis results. For example, it provides you the deflector shapes, then the stress contours, strain contours, the, the spread of the plasticity, everything in the viewport, which can be again easily seen through the visualization module. So in any backers, whatever may be the backers job that you have, it essentially goes through a standard procedure. First, you develop the model using the modules, and it is always recommended to follow the sequence that is prescribed in this module list. What I want to tell you is, you start with the part, move to the property, assemble the parts, define the steps, interactions, go to the loads, define the loads, mesh the various parts available to you in the model, and then do the optimization where required, define the job, submit it and run, and then visualize the results. So each module represents a set of operations, and once you complete a particular operation or a module, it does mean that you completed one aspect of the module, okay? So this is all regarding uh, the uh, what we call as the viewport area. So this area is the viewport. So here you'll find that there's a compass. This one is a compass. And using the compass, you'll be able to rotate the views. We'll see it later, okay? And on the uh, left side, you'll find a triad indicating the direction of XYZ, which is very, very much uh, convenient for you to 
fix the orientation of the members to pick up the right coordinates, etc. And uh, then coming to the other one, the here just below, you'll find right now is a blank area. And uh, this is what normally we call as a prompt area. And this prompt area provides the instructions for the user okay, to complete a particular procedure. For example, suppose I go to the parts, okay? So when I go to the part, automatically you will find that the toolbox on the left side that changes. Suppose I am interested here in creating a, uh, just I am interested in, for example, creating a, a, a shell X tool, okay? So obviously, when I select a shell X tool, it provides me, it provides me what we call as a prompt. That means what is requested out from the user, select a plane for the shell extrusion, right? So means that if we want to perform this operation, first of all, I need to select a plane. So during the model development, we have to be continuously interacting with this prompt area, okay? And through this prompt area, the backers will take the required information, okay? And it also allows it also allows the user to see whether the uh, request or whether the option or the reply provided by him is correct just to, by seeing his model through the viewport area. But just below this uh, prompt area, we have a message area, and this message area will provide us the status, right? It provides the status of the model, informations regarding the model, where it is saved, and also if there are any warnings, etc., it will provide here, right? So that is all a very brief review of this main window. Obviously, we will go through the various items that is provided in the tool uh, toolbox area, then items provided in, for example, the toolbar, the context bar, etc., during our future tutorials. So that's all regarding uh, uh, this uh, brief introduction of Abacus CAE. So thanks and have a nice day.